right, so uh, I just want to do a, a, a quick look. Uh, I bought a desktop CNC machine uh, off of Amazon. It's kind of eh, so-so build quality, Chinese-made parts. Uh, it took me a while to even get one of their programs test cut directly uh, because uh, setting up the machine and with the software was a little more than I thought it was going to be. But I finally uh, was able to program uh, just some basic words and I'm doing my first test cut of my own program on uh, a raw piece of aluminum I just had kicking around. So uh, we'll see how this goes, but I thought y'all might want to see uh, a first look at uh, what I'm working on. Uh, the primary point of this for me is going to be serializing uh, AR-15 lower receivers. Uh, anything that was an 80 percenter that came in New York. New York just passed a ghost gun ban a few weeks ago. And uh, some people are going to want to, uh, you know, be on the, the right side of our government so they don't end up having problems. So they're going to be looking for serial numbers. I want to be able to provide that service. Uh, I will have to admit, though, I think the law is a bunch of garbage. Just throwing that out there. So anyway, I'll give you a, 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 a quick shot of this finished test cut in just a second. So here's my first couple of serial numbers. I'd adjusted a bit. They came out okay. I even went on to attempt a logo of mine and I think that came out relatively good. I even attempted to put it on the side of one of my receivers. Okay, so I've been doing a bunch of test cuts, all sorts of R&D going on, but uh, I made a couple of 80% lowers for myself years ago, but due to the new uh, ghost gun issue in New York, um, yeah, I definitely want them serialized. So I'm serializing my first one over here right now. And uh, this is my first attempt at getting a serial number on, on an AR lower. And uh, I had to actually adjust the machine's uh, limits to be able to accommodate for the height of that receiver because uh, I had to remove the limit switch to get just that extra little bit I needed to get that in. Um, so I've also got another jig for the other side of the AR receiver printing right now so that I can then put my logo on the other side. I'm kind of curious how this is going to work out. Uh, I'll let you all know how this R&D goes as soon as that's done. Okay, so after doing a little more work on my design, uh, a couple of tries, I felt like it was going well enough to go ahead and uh, give it a go on my actual receiver. I thought they came out pretty good. Uh, the Bible verse in the middle didn't come out so good, so I modified it slightly on the program and then uh, I went ahead and put it on my receiver. So the logo itself, uh, the program stopped twice in the middle of running the program. And uh, when it did, it glitched and my zero was lost, which was somewhere around here. And so I actually had to start this program back up two times after uh, attempting to find the zero. And it was very difficult to do. And if you look real close, you can see the words almost have a shadowing effect on them uh, because the zero was not quite perfect. It didn't quite line up right exactly where it had been the time before. With that said, uh, this is still okay. This is just for me. This isn't for sale. And uh, it came out okay. And I think once I sandblast the finish here, uh, or rather the uh, base material, uh, in preparation for Cerakote later, it, it'll kind of uh, soften those edges anyway, so I'm not sure what they're going to look like. Uh, really, this whole process should be done after sandblasting and before Cerakote. Um, the actual serial number I decided to put on mine came out okay. Um, I initially had the depth set too deep, which I could see with that slash there and that one right there as it started. So then I brought it back to my zero and uh, I increased the height above the material just to start off. Uh, I, I'm going to have to go ahead and modify that program later. Uh, but anyway, it came out pretty good. Um, Overall, I'm pretty satisfied. Uh, the only difference is uh, I did not like having to reset the zero on this. And having to reset the zero on the project a couple of times really did make me think. It really did bother me. And so as a result of that, I did go ahead and order uh, one of the offline controllers. And uh, that's this guy right here, which seemed to work pretty uh, effectively at controlling the machine. I didn't even have to recalibrate the machine. And it uh, integrates a Z-axis better than the other program I was using over there. Uh, I ran the test program once in some wood. 
And uh, it seemed to run it flawlessly with no stops after several hours of cutting. So hopefully uh, it's stopping in the middle of a program problem is solved. But uh, anyway, my final thoughts on this uh, particular machine is it's a bit pricey. That whole plexiglass enclosure machine uh, uh, with tax was around $345, $345. And then the offline controller was an additional $50. Um, that, that's kind of pricey. I think you can do this a lot cheaper than this, but the plexiglass enclosure um, did cut down on the sound a fair bit, and it makes an easier area uh, isolated for me to worry about cleaning instead of it just flinging stuff all over my shop. So hopefully that'll be worthwhile. Anyhow, that's the first look. Uh, maybe that'll help one of you guys decide whether or not you're interested in a similar machine, and uh, maybe for this particular purpose. I don't know. Just comment. Let me know what you think. If uh, you want to see more of this, let me know. I can certainly uh, do a follow-up video. But uh, overall, I think it's going to be an interesting tool to have in my shop. Hopefully the Chinese parts don't break down too soon so it doesn't uh, end up being too useful for me. We'll see. All right, I'll check you guys later.